Hi guys, welcome back to At Home with Holly. My name's Holly, I'm so glad you're here today. Today we are going to be doing a building project inside my garage. So ignore the mess. That is a future rain barrel watering <laughs> irrigation project. The pieces have been sitting in my garage for a very long time, but this is where we're gonna put it in. However, more important project, oh, there's a fly in here. More important project that we need to get done today is we need to make some brassica cages. So I have brassica cages in my garden. Uh, they are, well, I'm gonna build some today so you can see, but if you live in a place where you have cabbage moss, those white moths with little black grayish dots on their bums, they're really pretty. Um, they land on your brassicas. So cabbages, broccoli, cauliflower, um, Brussels sprouts. They land on other things too, but they really like the brassicas. Um, they land on them and as soon as they touch them, they lay eggs, little yellow eggs everywhere. And those eggs hatch into these green worms that blend in and you can't hardly see them. Even if you think you've picked them all off, they're there and they will decimate your, <laughs> your brassicas, um, decimate very quickly in a few days. So I like to put, um, sometimes I put, I used to put hoops over the top of my, um, uh, brassicas so that I could keep the bugs off of them and be able to remove it. And I love the netting, the fine mesh, fine mesh netting um, that I can use to still have airflow, still have light and water and all that stuff, but bugs can't go through. So I'm going to, what I decided instead of using the hoops, I would use like hard sided with wood brassica cages. I'll put a picture of one of the ones that I have um, in the backyard right now. Um, and I need more because I expanded. <laughs> I'm always expanding. And um, I'm not a master carpenter. So the ones I built the first time, I didn't measure anything. I just eyeballed it. It was in the backyard and I made it happen. And I'm still not a master carpenter, but I've watched a few more videos on how to actually properly use things. So we'll give it a shot and see if we can make them more sturdy. We have a lot of wind in our area. Um, so I don't just build the cages, but I build them so they have like stakes pointing down in the ground to like anchor them in, which has worked really well for me. So let's get started. I've got all our supplies right here. We're gonna jump right into it. So in my supply basket for what we're gonna need today, I have the mesh that we're gonna use. I have my bucket of screws, all different lengths. Um, I have a screw, I have a, a sorry, a drill that I'm going to be using to pre-drill the holes. I have my impact driver to put the screws in. I have my um, tape measure and I have my uh, staple gun. I have a cordless one, but I also have a manual one in case, you know, in case that one's not charged. So that and the wood. Now, this is the wood that I have. I usually, I've done them in the past with two by fours. I've done them in the past with two by twos, one by twos. I've done them with all different uh, sizes. And I, you know, I'm kind of winging this project today, but I was at Menards <laughs> and I picked up some, I think these are one by threes and two by twos. So we will give it a shot and see what we can get done today. We have some wider ones and we have the two by twos. I'm going to use the two by twos for the four pieces that point down. So there's four straight sides that go down and then I'm going to wrap the top in a square and a bottom. So I'm making, if you can picture this, I'm making two squares of wood and then I'm sticking four posts down in the corners. And that's what we're making. <laughs> so, I need to do a little bit of math, which you should not do in public. The problem that I have with the two by twos or the, with, the, with the hoops when you use them is Brussels sprouts tend to get very tall and they will push on the top of your hoops. Um, and they're also like a hoop. So it's great for like low growing things like cabbages, but cauliflower, black broccoli and Brussels sprouts that stand up you don't lose, because these are square um, or rectangle, however you build them, you don't lose that precious real estate from the hoop so you can plant more in them, if that makes sense. So let's get these um, corner pieces cut. 
All right, my friends, let me try to walk you through this um, since you probably don't want to listen to <laughs> the noise from saws and um, impact drivers and drills. So what I'm doing here is I am cutting my corner pieces. Now, this, like I keep saying, is not an exact science and I am not a master carpenter by any means. Um, and what I'm doing here is I'm just taking eight foot pieces and I'm cutting them in half. And that is so that it can um, stand in the corner pieces and be at least 40 some inches tall. Then I'm taking my wider boards. And this is the part that really doesn't matter what size boards you use. I've used two by two by fours. I've used one by threes, one by fours, two by twos. I've used um, furring strips, the one by twos. I've used some deck planking. It doesn't matter. You're just wanting to make four pieces the same size to make a square. You're going to have a square at the top of the cage, a square at the bottom of the cage that's resting on the ground, and then the four corners going up and down are going to be thinner posts that are going to sink down a little further than the bottom cage and anchor it into the ground. Now I make these cages all different um, widths, lengths and widths. The height, I usually try to keep them about the 40 some inches because that way I can kind of interchange them anywhere in my garden so I can put Brussels sprouts anywhere and use them. But you can customize these. So these boxes that I'm making today are um, less than three feet by less than three feet. And that is because I'm putting them in a three by six bed where normally my beds are eight by four. Um, so these two are custom for my one of my smaller raised beds. So I'm just making sure if the bed is six by three and I'm wanting to make these um, two of them to fit in one bed. I need to make sure these are less than three by three um, to make sure that they fit nicely in there. So um, I'm making these this way, but you guys can make these, you can make them, I could have made them eight by four to fit one whole cage over a bed. Um, it would be a little heavy to lift on and off. <laughs> so I would encourage you to kind of break it up and that way too, you're not um, kind of pigeonholed in what you want to do, meaning that you can move these anywhere through your garden and you don't have to have one full bed that isn't getting any access by the pollinator. So I just want to encourage you guys, like I said, I'm not a master builder. I don't, this isn't as plum or square as if I had a second person helping me or if I had all the right tools. But at the end of the day, I'm building a cage that's to keep out cabbage moths and the things that I'm growing in the garden are the beautiful thing. And as long as this doesn't distract from my enjoyment from the space and it helps me um, get a little further in my gardening journey by actually being able to harvest the <laughs> vegetables because the bugs aren't getting to them, then that's all that matters. So it doesn't always have to be pretty. You don't have to wait for all the knowledge in the world. You just kind of get in there and try it. And every year I build a couple more of these and I get a little better in my carpenter skills and I get a little more advanced and I get a little more confident. And But in the meantime, I'm just kind of making it work. And so I'm just going to encourage you guys to do that too. So here we go. I'm pre-drilling the holes so that the boards don't split. I'm using my screw, my impact driver to attach the screws, making sure that these are going to be nice and steady and sturdy and strong since we do have like 70 mile an hour or more wind gusts here from time to time so here we go i'm going to get these um squares built oh and the squares you can build some of them i, I built some of them today out of one by three some of them out of two by twos doesn't really matter the two by twos do have a tendency to split a little more often so definitely pre-drill those holes and now here we go I have my first box on the ground and I'm going to start attaching the legs to the corners I'm going to attach all four legs to the corners and then I'm going to grab the second box which is when it's flipped upside down going to sit almost um, at the bottom but it's going to sit flush on the ground I'm making one more square and then I'm going to attach it to the four posts that I already have attached okay so I'm definitely not a master carpenter <laughs> builder of anything. But the whole point of me showing you guys this is you don't have to be a master builder as long as you understand the concept of what we're trying to do. So this is upside down right now. Um, it's got a top square, a bottom square. We're going to put netting all around the side and over the top. And then the pointy ends are going to go into the ground to kind of anchor it down. So let me show you what we got so far. So again, this is upside down. So this will be the top square. This will be the bottom square, and it's a little wonky, not completely level. It doesn't have to be, <laughs> okay? Um, it really, really, actually, I know I did that one too high. I just gotta move that one down and it'll be level, but I, this is just the concept. So then you wrap the whole thing in netting, 
flip it upside down and you have a cage that the cabbage moths cannot, aphids, fungus gnats, they can't get through birds, none of the things can get through. So you don't want to put anything in here that needs pollinated by pollinators. So that's why I just do brassicas. However, this does keep all the other bugs off of them. So let me fix that one screw, <laughs> get it more level, and then we'll get it wrapped in some netting. So one of the channels that I watch on YouTube is um, Jessie at Plot 37. Um, she's over in the UK, and I love watching their allotment um, vlogs from the UK. And one of the things she has is a, um, she calls it a uh, carrot box, and it's a shorter version of this that she uses over her carrot so that the white flies that they have over there don't um, eat her carrot sprouts. And I thought, oh my gosh, that is such a good idea. And so I just kind of made it a little taller <laughs> and um, use it for my brassicas. But again, I just want to make sure that I reiterate, pollinators cannot get through this, meaning your bees, your um, everything, butterflies, dragonflies, nothing can get through this. So I would definitely, definitely be careful not to put, you know, a zucchini or a tomato or anything like that inside here that has flowers that need pollinated because the pollinators cannot get through. And then if you didn't have your fruit get pollinated, you, you won't have any fruit. <laughs> so um, only things that don't need pollinated. So brassicas are the number one. You could put lettuce inside one of these cages. You could put um, herbs inside these cages, but definitely not anything that has flowers that need pollinated. So um, when I wrap this with the netting, I like wrap it around the, the posts a little bit and then tuck it behind and then use my electric staple nailer thing and hold it in place. Um, I've just found that that kind of gets it a little tighter and more taut so that the wind doesn't um, rip it as much. And there's no great way to do this. Well, I, there might be for people that are really good at DIYing, you know, reupholstering um, couches and chairs and things like this, maybe have it, the corners hidden a little better, but that's not what I'm doing today. <laughs> I'm just getting this attached and stapled on so that we can get this done because we already have the cabbage moths coming and I had to throw up some hoops really quick last week to make sure they were covered until I got this um, project built. All right, so this is one brassica cage done. It is 46 inches, I believe, 46 inches. And it is fully netted all the way around. And it has legs sticking out of the bottom so that it can stick in the ground a little bit. It's not perfectly straight, but it's solid and no bugs are getting through. So I'm just gonna go ahead and build uh, two more of these and then we'll get these out in the garden, get them set up where they need to go. Oh, one more thing I should probably say about these is I get these up as soon, I like to get these up ideally as soon as you plant out any of the brassicas because those cabbage moths and other um, pests <laughs> come out pretty early and once you miss it and they lay their little worms out oh, of the caterpillars they just eat everything so quickly so you can see how quickly this comes together once you've got um, kind of got the hang of it and so I just kind of keep flipping it around and attaching and stapling the netting all over the place. You can also um, throw some fa uh, frost fabric over these as well if you're going to get a frost. Sometimes if, I, um, if I'm going to get a deep frost and I already have uh, my brassicas outside, I will lift these up, throw um, one or two layers of frost fabric over the baby plants, and then put this down on top, and it gives them just a nice little extra layer of protection um, for those um, those nights where it dips down a little lower than you're wanting. So here we are out in my backyard. I'm going to get this um, these hoops removed, and then I'm going to put the brassica cages that we built um, on this bed that's right next to the chicken coop. So spoiler alert, when I measured the bed to decide how big I needed to make these cages to fit, um, in a six by three bed, I measured the, the bed and I was like, oh, three feet, three feet. That's easy. Right. What I didn't take into account was that the, um, flower, 
<laughs> the flower um, the, the flower box that is attached to the chicken coop actually hangs over the edge of the bed, which means that my brassica cages would not fit <laughs> because they wouldn't go down. And at first I thought, man, that's only like an inch or two off. Like, what can I do? Maybe I can just kind of squeeze it in. Maybe they can lean a little bit. I don't know. Maybe. And then I thought, oh man, am I going to have to cut these cages down? And I thought, oh, well, that's not good because I don't want to cut the cages down because then they're going to be, you know, like 24 inches and I want to really have the plants have some room to grow. So I kind of just looked at it and looked at it and tried to find some way around me having to do the really hard job of moving this bed <laughs> three inches. And the more I stared at it, the more I was like, all right, Holly, let's just get this done. So I ended up taking the cages off and then I actually shoveled out the last, the back three inches of soil out of the back of the bed. And then I took the shovel and kind of wedged the bed forward a few inches. And then I took all the soil that I had shoveled into this wheelbarrow and I shoveled it back into the bed. It only took about 15 minutes. I don't know why I thought it was gonna be such a big <laughs> project, but what, I, what that ended up doing is it just scooted the whole bed forward about three inches. And that was just enough to be able to get my cages in and not have them um, be blocked by the planter box. And so it always takes a little more time than you thought, but it is always worth it in the end, I believe. So the thing about brassicas is once you plant them, they really don't like their roots messed with. And so I was just trying to find a way around having to dig these up, move them, all that stuff. So yay, it fits perfectly once I was able to scoot that bed forward. So we'll get both boxes in where they need to go and then we are ready to enjoy what we built. So separated into two, three by three, just under three by three cages, tall enough for the brassicas to grow. So the Brussels sprouts in the back will get tall and the cabbages in the front have plenty of room. There's actually broccoli in there as well. Gonna be good. All right, my friends, thanks so much for hanging out with me today while we built our brassica cages that they're nice and safe. I appreciate all the likes and the comments and the shares. I can't wait to see you guys next time. If you haven't subscribed, please consider subscribing. We have so much more growing and building and fun projects to do. Can't wait to see you guys next time. Bye, my friends.